Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and in yesterday's video I talked about the fact that the business we used to run in here is no longer operating, so now I've got a 30 by 60 shop that doesn't have a designated purpose right now. It's got a concrete floor, it's heated and cooled, it should be a nice place for me to get a lot of work done, especially things like maintenance on the equipment and woodworking and just anything I need to get done. So should make a really nice workspace, but until I start setting things up, it's hard to tell exactly how much space we're going to have, and there's a lot of stuff in here right now that we've been using. So, kind of a big project, and I'm not sure exactly what we're going to get done in here, but I'll give you a little tour of where we're at right now. So I have three of these tables. I had these custom built. They're really sturdy, and... These were, were our assembly tables, and it's going to be nice to continue to utilize. Probably I'll leave two of these set up for different projects, but I've actually got five full-size assembly tables like this. Three of them are exactly like this. Then we've got one over here that's wooden. It's actually got the Harley emblem, emblem on the top, but that's a custom top that's on it that can come off. Then we've got another wooden work table here, and these are taking up way too much space. I really only need one work table in here. Of course, over here we have the bathroom, so that's the one fixture that can't be moved in here. Everything else can be moved or cleared out or whatever we need to do. I've got all this shelving over here, so I can store all my accessories that go along with the stuff I do, you know, extra hardware for attachments, and I mean, I can store chainsaws and all my stuff in here that I'd like to keep out of the weather and keep out of theft. You know, I'm not going to bring attachments in here. I've got the other shop, the other building set up for that, and I think skid steer attachments. The tractor attachments are going to go in the lean-to shed, skid steer attachments in the Quonset hut, but I definitely want to get the machines in here, and I want to get my lumber in here. Because the lumber doesn't dry properly being, being stored outside. It does, but it'll be better in a heated and cooled shop like this. So, we've got this table here. Then the other thing that's interesting is all the way around this building, I built these shelves. And we use those to store materials in. And they're pretty good size. I mean, that's like eight foot long. Yeah, these are eight to ten feet long, three to four feet wide. And I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got six of those shelves up there that I can store stuff on. I would say weight rating on those... You know, is I'm just guessing, but I know you can put four or five hundred pounds on them because they've. And if I wanted, I could put a leg under them now. Previously, that didn't work out, but if I wanted to put more weight up there, I could. So we've got all that, and then fixtures. This back area, probably back here, will be where we have the woodworking stuff set up. So we've got two table saws, we've got two miter saws a drill press, pocket hole drilling station, and the panel saw. Now right now, where the panel saw is oriented, it prevents us from using the third garage door. So I think the panel saw is going to be put up against a wall. Because right now, previously, it made a workflow between the panel saw, the table saw, and the miter saw. It made a workflow. But now that we're not utilizing that process if i put that against a wall it'll open everything up so a lot to do i think we'll do a little bit of the smaller stuff some cleanup and then we'll get the camera back on and look at, at how we're moving stuff got a lot of sawdust to deal with before we can move stuff around dust collection system we had blew the sawdust out right here 
I'd let it pile up for a few months and then come get it with the tractor or the skid loader. I'm guessing we'll continue to use that, so I'm gonna pull all this stuff that was on the floor out and put it right there. Pretty rare this time of year. It's actually not too bad out here. Probably high 50s. Not bad if you're working. So I was clearing out the back wall. I was gonna put the panel saw up against this wall over here because up against the wall, it takes up the least space, obviously, because the area in front of it has to stay open so you can run it. But the air intake for the, the HVAC system is right there and we'd be blowing sawdust directly in it. Even though I have this dust collector up here, I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna take, I think I'm gonna move the panel saw and put it on this wall. I was thinking about storing wood on this wall, the, the sawmill lumber that we're drying, but I think it makes more sense. We're gonna bring that lumber in through a side door, through the side door. So it might make more sense to dry lumber over here. So I think that's what I'm gonna try for now. We'll see. <laughs> this thing's not gonna be super easy to move. We've bolted it to the floor and you know it's a rough wooden structure but it'll move we'll get it now if you just roll it back oh yeah so now that needs to push down the little tab will lock in the other way there you go now you lock in and it roll we can tuck that in against the wall which wall are you going to put it at right there? yeah just back there for now um do these slide in yeah The concrete screws aren't wanting to come out. So I was just talking, this young man right here is one of my employees that's been let go from this business shutting down. And we've been talking, he's back in here uh, helping me clean this out. And he, he just made the comment that fit our conversation that said, if everyone in the world, if all of their problems were thrown in a pile, I'd probably grab mine and run because this is... It's disheartening seeing this business fail, but a lot of worse things in the world than than that. So I'm gonna be glad for what I have, right? Now we've just unbolted the saw. I think it's pretty heavy, so I'm gonna grunt and see if he does all the pulling. <laughs> yeah. Let's lean this sheet up against the wall over there. So rather than carry it, I think we're going to slide it, but we have to slide it around this. Okay. So we can come out and around this way. I can whip my, my hand try that. first. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Every time we move this, it's got to be re-leveled, but it's got adjustment points on it that let you do that fairly easily.
Okay. Now we need to take the whole thing that direction a little bit. This could be built onto a skid so it could be easily moved, but the idea is to not move it very much. I'll probably bolt it down to the floor. I might wait a couple weeks and just see what we decide, but then I'll end up bolting it down again. All right. <laughs> that, six years ago when we started, I said, man, how are we going to cut, you know, 50 sheets of plywood up into these parts. That's a pretty tough to do with the table saw. So what we need is a panel saw. Well, cheapest we could even find them used was like 2,500. And that was out of the question. It was impossible, the idea of spending $2,500 to start this business. And uh, dad built that by buying nothing, literally nothing. About a month after we started using it, his old skill saw or circular saw burnt up and we had to get another one. But other than that, we spent nothing building that. It was all lumber that was just laying around, materials that were laying around. And since then, on average, it's a little more than one sheet of plywood for each product. And we've done 13,000. So we've done 13,000 sheets of plywood off that homemade panel saw. Not too shabby, right? I don't think today I'm going to get all of the equipment set up but because I need to give it thought. But I'm kind of thinking right now, we got one miter saw over there. We got the drill press, planer, jointer, that table saw, and almost everything is on wheels and can roll. So it can all be organized in here and set up to work, but then it can also be just moved out of the way completely if we wanted, if I want to pull the Model A in here and spend a month doing some, some work on the Model A, the fact that all that stuff is movable, so I'm going to put that stuff in here where it's almost blocking this door even, but ha since it's all on wheels, I can just move it out of the way if I need to, and I can drive in and out of here, and I think maybe where the miter saw is, that's a blank wall space. I may stack my lumber over there. I think I think we might go out and get some of that lumber and get it in here to dry. All right, for right now, I think we're going to take all of our scrap wood that's too big to get rid of. It's just plywood, three quarter inch plywood in fairly small pieces and I'll stack it up here and I'll use it eventually. Unfortunately, I didn't catch it on camera, but I just walked right into this. Where it was located before, it was fine to be down that low because it was up against the back of that saw. But I guarantee that would not be the last time I ran into it. And these probably won't even stay here because these need to be... It, we'll just wait and see on that. But for right now, I'm going to raise this up. It's fairly easy to do if you've got a second person. I use dust collectors as often as possible on my saws, but... I'm not always set up to do that. So when I can't, we've got these that just pull dust out of the air. I've got three of these from Grizzly. Okay. Just a little bit more. Sorry, man. No, you're all right. All right, you can let that one down. Let it down. I don't know, work right. Oh, that's pretty good. Right clear. That's just that's like exactly how high that one is too. Yeah. Okay. Nice. That'll work for now until we find out if that's even where we want these. Okay, we've put about an hour into cleaning up sawdust that was under everything, taking all the smaller hand tools and and jigs and stuff we used back here. We've got that all relocated up to the front for now. And we're getting ready to move our big work table that was in the center of the shop. And we're going to set it up back in this corner. Then right next to that, we're going to set the smaller table that's got the vise and the bench grinder. All right, I'm going to share with you what we're moving here. We got to clear all the stuff off of it. But this table here is the ultimate Frankenstein. I started building this product 
in my carport at our other house. I was just like on my hands and knees building it. And the first thing that I came up with that was better than that is the little kit where you get this block that's got a bolt under it and you put a couple two by fours in it and you build like a temporary uh, saw horses. So I got some temporary saw horses and some salvage wood and built this table and was using it outside. And six years later, we've used that table for 107 different things. And we've built multiple extensions on it. And then we built a shelf under it. And it is the most cobbled together thing you've ever seen. Like it might fall apart. It's still made out of those saw horses and the plastic broke on them, but it's got so many other things screwed to it. It's, it's like, uh, right now I should just disassemble it and burn the pieces. I don't need that over in the corner, but it's a little bit sentimental. So we're going to move it over there for now. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. This is our measuring device where we cut our turf. Take that spike and drop it in this hole right there. And it pivots out of the way. That's how everything was figure, figure out something. That was made, like, that device was made like five years ago, right? Yeah. And this, uh, I was the first one that actually cut the spot. Yeah, figuring out how to cut each square carpet exactly the same. <laughs> was a was a challenge for a while and then this board's been used for five years like you know consistently every yeah 30 hours a week every day hmm. how far so that way we could get it like i said here and drag it to the last little bit maybe yeah. That's going to stay there until I gain some closure <laughs> with the whole thing. All right, I'm sure eventually we'll have a use for that air supply, but for now we'll get it out of the way. Oh. All right, not sure where I'm going to put this dust collector. Hey, Cooper, I'm trying to walk off with this and it's still plugged in. Can you find the oh. cord on that side? Yep. After about four hours of work shoveling this out, we brought the brains out. My, my younger son says, uh, why don't you suck it out with the vacuum? I'm like, we don't have a shop vac out here. Well, we have a dust collector. My son's going in to get a light. I need to get some lights put out here. I'm already getting tired of moving this wood around. I had it set outside and I said, that's not good enough. I need to get that inside. Now it's under a roof, but it's not fully protected. It's not the best way to get this lumber to dry better is to keep it in a climate controlled shop. And now I have the ability to do that. Okay, so the, the lumber is going to go from my foot to the end of the tape measure. Put that at about the one foot mark. They can't see your foot, by the way. That's okay. But one at the one foot mark and one at the nine foot mark. So then in between those is eight feet. Okay, so dividing that into one, two, three spaces, about two and a half feet a piece. I think the closer together your spacers and your sticks are the less bowing you're going to have i'm going to put these sticks on the same spots where our four by fours are underneath and we'll continue that all the way up the stack. Thank <laughs> you. 
One of these pieces of lumber has two bullets in it, and we found them when we were cutting, but now I don't know where it's stacked at. Probably a good idea. Now, need a broom. Okay, so when I came out here, my plan was to get the entire shop organized. And I've literally done half the shop, and I've been out here for eight hours. So give you the little tour we got the panel saw now everything in the center here is stuck out here for me to get a feel for space but everything except the bandsaw is on wheels so if we're using the table saw we might roll everything else out of the way and basically with all of them they're probably going to be run mostly in the middle but we've got panel saw and of course there's miter saw a work table Portable table saw. Here we've got a band saw. We've got a grinder, vise, drill press, pocket hole station, another miter saw. We've got this dust collector. We've got the planer with its own dust collector. Table saw, and we've got a run out table. Of course, that's the other miter saw that's got the measuring and the stops built into it. And then we have the new jointer that I haven't even used. And over here, we have five stacks of rough cut lumber. So this is cherry. I got all this cherry from Tony's Tractor Adventure when I went up there. This top piece here is cherry on this stack. And the rest of this is walnut that's been drying for well over a year. It's all pretty dry. This stack is a mismatch. We've got hackberry and hedge, and I'm not sure what else in there. And this entire stack, it's you know waist high. This is all two inch oak, 12 inch wide. Then this entire stack right here is all walnut. At the bottom, we've got some three inch thick slabs, and up at the top, this is one inch stuff. So mostly, this all has dimensional lumber edges on it a few pieces at the top are live edge so this is set up where we can do woodworking in here but i'm not going to do woodworking every day so like i said the fact that all this has wheels on it i can roll all of this stuff over against the panel saw and i could park the maw lay in here and work on it if i need to or if i want to and then we still have the other half of the shop, which I think I'm going to park equipment in. But we'll see how that goes. May, I don't know if I'm going to get to that right away or if it's going to be a week or two. So we'll see how it all goes. But I feel really good instead of sitting in the house and thinking about how disappointed I am about this business shutting down. I'm out here getting something done, and that's a lot better feeling. So... That's a lot of lumber right there. That really is. M most of that's dry. The cherry and one stack of the walnut still needs more time to dry. But I keep this shop in the winter now that we're not working out here. I've been keeping it between 55 and 60 degrees. And it should be a good environment for that to dry in. All right, well, I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.